Do you remember back in school when you get called out by your maths or science teacher to solve a semi-complicated problem? And after a couple of seconds of thinking to yourself, you'd come up with a solution of 25 and a half. And the next thing that happened would be your teacher asking you to come up to the board and explain to your fellow students exactly step by step what your reasoning was. Well, today we're going to be that asshole. I probably shouldn't be using the word asshole. But anyways, today we're going to be that person asking our large language model to show all the steps that it takes to get to the answer. Today we're going to be looking at two little prompting techniques called zero shot chain of thought prompting, which is a bit of a mouthful, and chain of thought prompting, which is a slightly smaller mouthful. Those will be two new techniques that you'll be able to add to your prompting arsenal alongside of the zero, one and few shot prompting. And if you haven't seen that video, there's a link right over here to watch or over here. I think, I think over here. So let's get into it. We'll start off with the slightly more exciting of the two, which is the zero shot chain of thought prompting. And the reason why it's a little bit more exciting to me is because it's so damn simple. All you have to do is add one simple line to your prompt and it will make things a lot better. So the line is, show me your reasoning step by step or something along those lines. And Let's have a look at an example so you see what I have in mind exactly. So here goes. It is a bit of a mouthful, but it is a logical little brain teaser. And feel free to solve it yourself. So you can pause the video and do it yourself. And I will now commence reading it. So a man has 53 socks in his jar, 21 identical blue, 15 identical black and 17 identical red. The lights are out and he is completely in the dark. How many socks must he take out to make 100% to, to be 100% certain he has at least one pair of black socks? And if you ask me, I think it's pretty simple. All you have to do is find the pessimistic scenario where you constantly pull out everything but black socks. So effectively, you'd need to sum the 21 identical blue ones, the 17 identical red ones, and then add two black ones from the remaining 15 black ones. So that would be 21 plus 17, which is 38, plus two of the black ones, which is 40. So that's the answer I'm looking for. 40 socks is what you need to pull out to be 100% sure that at least two of those socks are black. So let's see what ChatGPT says. And it gives us a bit of reasoning. However, in the end, it gets to an answer of 16 socks, which is completely wrong because technically, if you're very unlucky, and you pull out 16 socks out of this bucket or drawer, sorry. If you're unlucky, they could all basically be blue. So I'm still standing at my 40 sock answer. And so let's see what the improved version of this prompt will give us. So it's gonna be the same question with all those socks and drawers. But we're gonna add a simple line, which is before coming up with an answer, think about this step by step and show all your reasoning behind each of them finally present the answer, which is a bit longer than what I said with the show me the step-by-step -step moves, but I want to be explicit. When you talk to large language models, what you really want to do is be as straightforward as possible without leaving anything in between the lines. So that is what I said, and let's see what the answer is. And as you can see, it's giving me all the different steps uh, which it uses to get to the response, even bolding out all the most important parts like Worst case scenario, like what I said before, picking out non-black socks, total non-black socks, adding one black sock, picking out the second black sock. And the response it got to is 40, which is exactly what I expected. And the thing I want you to remember from this exercise is that if you have a prompt, which might give you several different responses because it's a bit tricky and your large language model might screw it up, well, just ask it to be precise about the steps and present them to you. All right. So that was zero shot chain of thought prompting. Now let's move to the regular chain of thought prompting. And as we'll dive into it, you'll realize that it's quite similar to the one shot prompt, which we talked about last week. So let's look at our next little brain teaser. And it reads, if there are 10 books in a room and I read two, how many books are still in the room? Which is a very simple task, I believe for a human being, but as you will see, it's not as simple for a large language model. In my opinion, it should be 10 because just because you read a book doesn't mean that it should be removed from the room. It can still be in the room, you just read it. So nothing's changed, you still have 10 books. Now let's see what ChatGPT has to say. If you read two books out of the 10, there would be eight books remaining in the room. 
which is obviously wrong. So the chain of thought prompting that we're going to be using now is you showing an example of how you would solve a very similar question to this one. So as an example, I wrote, if there are five apples in my backpack and I think about two of them, how many apples are left in my backpack? And the answer is, there are still five apples. Thinking about them doesn't remove them from my backpack, which I think is a bit of an analogy to our book problem. So then I paste the actual book problem and hope for the best as always. And ChatGPT says there would still be 10 books in the room. Reading them doesn't remove them unless you take them out or someone else moves them, which is great. This is exactly what I wanted. So those are the two chain of thought prompting techniques, one of them being the zero shot and this one being sort of a one shot or multi shot prompt technique. So the key outcome of this lesson, in my opinion, would be if you're in doubt, just add the line of show me the steps to completing the problem. And that's it. That's chain of thought prompting for you. As always, I hope this was interesting and useful and feel free to drop a comment if you have questions or something to say about chain of thought prompting. And I'll see you in the very next lesson. Take care.